October 27, 2004, it ended. The angst and agony of a long-suffering legion of fans, along with one of the game's legendary curses, were laid to rest. The Red Sox completed the greatest comeback in history and became world champions for the first time since Babe Ruth called Boston his baseball home. But what could they do for an encore? Would they be able to overcome defections and injuries to the horses that led them to their champagne drink? After vanquishing a ghost nearly a century old, overcoming these mortal concerns should be no problem at all. sold-out Citizens Bank Park. Welcome to Phillies Baseball Game 1 of a weekend series of Phils and the world champion Boston Red Sox. Pleasant night for baseball here at Citizens Bank Park. Harry Callis with Chris Wheeler and Larry Anderson and the Boston Red Sox defending world champions wheels and they have trade ball, tra trailed Baltimore by quite a few games all year. Now they're only a half game back. Yeah, they're starting to catch up, Harry. They had their problems early in the year. Kurt Schilling, of course, has been out for the most part they had problems with their rotation but as you say they're hot right now nine and one in their last ten games playing very very well they can flat out hit I mean a lot of nights you're just going to have to outscore them they are a very very good home team they were struggling and Terry Francona said before the game this thing kind of came out of nowhere we get home where we're pretty good and we get hot and we go into Cleveland where they had been red hot and we won a couple close ones. We hung on for dear life one night. We beat them another night. And you know what? Because we've kind of been taking care of business, now we put a pretty good streak together. And I think that's the way you do it, just by winning each night. And Kurt, concern yourself with tonight, and you look up a week from now, and all of a sudden you got a good streak going. And Phillies pitchers tonight, L.A., will have to contend with those two guys in the middle of the lineup, or T. and Ramirez. Uh, and that's one thing. When you go against a team, any team, you know, you go out to pitch and you think about one guy you try and let not beat you. Well, these guys are back-to-back. -back. 34 home runs between them and 119 RBIs. They can just flat mash, and that's part of the reason that these guys are so hot right now. This is a game in Cleveland the other night off of Millwood. Ortiz and Ramirez both with home runs, and when they hit them, boy, do they go along with they do not just clear the fences. So John Lieber going against this club today and the whole pitching staff is going to have to try and get these two guys out somehow, some way. But when they're swinging well, I mean, they are just a force. Ramirez is only one for 11 off Lieber, though. It will be John Lieber on the mound for the Phils and knuckleballer Tim Wakey at field for Boston. Starting lineups after these messages. Today's baseball is brought to you by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. By Southwest Airlines, nonstop service to over 59 destinations all across the country. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. By Citizens Bank, with the most seven-day branches in Philly. By Toyota, with 17 models moving you forward. And by Independence Blue Cross. You deserve it. Everyone deserves it. at Citizens Bank Park. The lineup cards are being handed out at home plate by Gary Varsho, Phillies coach, and Lynn Jones, coach for Terry Francona's Boston Red Sox. Before the game, the starting lineups were introduced by Michael Buffer, one of the all-time great ring announcers in the history of boxing, and Michael Buffer introduced the lineups. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get her! Buffer and Dan Baker, Phillies PA announcer, on the field before the game. Buffer did a great job introducing the starting lineups and a sold-out Citizens Bank Park and Red Sox Nation is pretty well represented here tonight, L.A. Yeah. A lot of people actually have uh, some 
good friends came down from uh, from the Boston area up in Nashua, New Hampshire. Lester and Jolene Johnson came down. I got to know them when I was up with the Red Sox back in 90. A lot of people came down for this. This is standing room only crowd and the standing room only crowd. The standing room was sold out at 4.07 this afternoon. Wow. So we have a jam packed house and it will be so this entire weekend against the Boston Red Sox. Well, these teams have seen each other quite a bit. 22 games. Bills have a 12 to 10 advantage. Although they've been out hit by the Sox, outscored by one run, but pretty close, pretty close numbers between the two clubs. Terry Francona in his second year. There you see his wins and losses in his entire managerial career, but in his first year with the Boston Red Sox, they won it all. There with his bench coach, Brad Mills, who there's Millsy. He was here with Francona. Juan Tito managed the ball club here. And the Phillies are taking the field for game one of this weekend series with the Bo Sox. Let's check Terry Francona's starting lineup for Boston. He'll have Johnny Damon in center field leading off. Edgar Renneria shortstop at second. David Ortiz first base hitting third. Manny Ramirez left field bats fourth. Trot Nixon right field hitting fifth. Bill Miller will be at third base hitting sixth. Doug Mirabelli will catch him bat seventh. Mark Bellhorn second base bats eighth. Tim Wakefield the pitcher hitting ninth. That lineup is facing 35 year old John Lever. And Lever trying to get his kind of struggles turned around. He's lost his last couple outings. 15 starts overall, eight and six with a 463 ERA. Gives up a fair amount of hits, but that's not a big concern. He only walked 20 in his 95 in the third innings, 55 strikeouts for him. Southwest Airlines scouting report. Road ERA 383 has had more problems here at home. ERA almost two runs more at home. And six home runs allowed in his last four starts. He's allowed 20 overall. It's been kind of a problem for John Lieber. Key states Chrysler Jeep keys to the game is Lieber avoiding the big inning. That's one thing that's hurt him lately is just you now he'll pitch well for a while then have one big inning and then settle down and pitch well. So you've got to try and stay away from that big inning and the power of the Sox lineup. These guys are some thumpers. There's David Ortiz. He's one of them. He's had a heck of a year. 18 home runs, 62 RBIs. Manny Ramirez, the other one, has hit 16 home runs, 57 RBIs. They lead the American League in batting average of 284 and in runs scored with 394 of them do the Red Sox. And Johnny Damon stands in the leadoff. Damon, the third leading hitter of the American League, hitting a 338. One ball and no strikes to Damon. Mark Wagner calls the balls and strikes. Paul Nard at first, Gary Darling at second, Rob Drake at third. One ball and one strike to Johnny Damon. Johnny Damon, third in the American League in hitting. Nine Robertson Guerrero. Leaves the league and hits with 94 of them. Loops this one. Oh! Almost got over the head of Bell, but David reaches up and makes the catch. He was bad. That ball went out the way Wakefield's pitches are going to come in. <laughs> like a knuckleball. Uh, David take, trying to backtrack there. He, I think he wanted to jump, but he couldn't really jump because his feet weren't under him when he was backing up. There is the knuckleballer we'll see tonight, Tim Wakefield. Here is Edgar Renteria. One ball and no strikes. Of course, we saw a lot of Renteria in the National League before he came over to the Red Sox with the St. Louis Cardinals. He's hitting at 268. Unenviable position for Renteria, taking the place of Nomar Garcia Parra. He 
He's had the most at bats against the Lieber. 54 at bats, a lifetime 296 hitter against Lieber with a home run. Two balls and a strike to Renneria. The Red Sox in offensive rankings. Well, let's see. First in average, first in runs, first in doubles, fifth in home runs, and first in on base percentage. Pretty good offense. Lead the major leagues in on base percentage. The Phillies are first in the National League in on base percentage. Three and one to Renneria. It is a full count. David Ortiz waits on deck. Bouncing ball to David Bell. Renneria is retired. Two down here in the first, and we'll bring on David Ortiz. Ortiz hitting 306, tied for fifth in the American League in homers with 18. He's second in RBIs with 62. Alex Rodriguez leads the lead with 63 runs batted in. Lifetime against Lieber. He's four for ten. Two of his four hits homers. Also a leading vote getter. He's popular with the fans. For the All-Star game. This is a pretty veteran club, the Boston Red Sox. Ortiz and Edgar Renneria are the two youngest at 29 years of age in this starting lineup. You look at 302 RBIs in 348 games. It's phenomenal. Jammed him and he pops a fly to shallow center, going all the way out to make the play. Here's Chase Hudley. A one, two, three inning for John Lieber. No runs, hits, airs. Nothing for Boston. Phil's coming to bat in the first. Corey Lattle here. None of the guys will forget Chase's pinch hit grand slam. You should have been out here to see it. See the Phil's and Marlins July 14th through the 16th at 7.05 and July 17th at 1.35. Order tickets now. Red Sox didn't score in the top of the first. Charlie Manuel's starting lineup for the Phil's brought to you by Budweiser. We'll have Jimmy Rollins at shortstop leading off. Kenny Lofton center field by second. Bobby Abreu right field inning third. Jim Tomey at first base pass fourth. Pat Burrell left field inning fifth. Chase Hudley at second base batting sixth. David Bell the third baseman at seventh. Mike Lieberthal will catch him bat eighth. John Lieber the pitcher hitting ninth. They are facing the 38-year-old knuckleballer Tim Wakefield. And 14 starts for Wakefield, 5-6 and six with a 4-4-1 ERA. Up a few more hits than innings. Only walked 39, even with that knuckleball dancing around. 53 strikeouts for him. Southwest Airlines scouting report, longest tenure with the Red Sox, 11 seasons. Good knuckleball, and that's been his pitch for his career. No home runs in his last three starts for Wakefield. Jimmy Rollins, the first one to face him. J. Roll hitting a 282. Missed the knuckleball, one strike. Best philosophy you can get on a knuckleballer is you see it high, let it fly. You see it low, let it go. I talked to Kenny Lofton before the game about hitting the knuckleball, and he said, "What?" I asked him what the key is. He said, wait, wait, wait. Uh, wait until the last instant. If that ball comes in over the plate, then let it fly. But wait as long as you can. One ball and two strikes. The last two pitches at 68 and 67 miles an hour. So you have to wait a little bit. Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant tonight is Michael McPartland of Collingswood, New Jersey. If Phil's hit home run this game, Michael wins $100. Learn of the McDonald's home run jackpot. Visit your participating McDonald's for an entry form. Rollins goes down swinging, and little does Wakefield know that you don't strike out that leadoff man. That's the high knuckleball, and Jimmy just swings right over the top of it. You see how he just pushes that ball out with his knuckles. Very little rotation on the ball. So here's Kenny Lofton. Lofton hitting at 384. His 
face Wakefield a lot hitting 268 lifetime against Wakefield with a home run. It's a very tough pitch to hit but one of the reasons that there are very few knuckleball pitchers in the game today or even over the years is that it's really hard to throw strikes yep. with it. This guy has got it down pretty well. He'll throw almost 90 percent knucklers every once in a while. He'll show a high 70s fastball but <laughs> for the most part it's all knuckleballs. Well there's one that Mirabelli misses and so that's going to be a strikeout and probably a pass ball. It's hard to catch too. Well, they're going to call it a wild pitch. Now you see his ball doesn't even rotate. He just missed it. That ball I mean. It should be a pass ball. It really should be. Get a little bigger glove with the knuckleball. Pitcher, catchers a lot of times have that bigger glove, but it doesn't help much there. And we'll bring on Bobby Abreu. Rebelli pretty much Wakefield's designated catcher. He should almost a first baseman's type glove. And we expect you'd be able to run on a knuckleball ball or two, wouldn't you, like yep. as far as stealing bases? See there, Wakefield though very quick to the plate. That was plate. his fastball. Yep. He got that up there at 76. 76, Ella. So there is hope. 18 attempts and steals against Wakefield. Successful 13. Oh, what a jump. Yeah. Mirabelli has absolutely no chance. Stolen base, Kenny Lofton, his eighth stolen base of the year. The Phillies are second in the National League in steals. That's their 50th. Only the New York Mets have more. Great jump by Lofton. No chance at all for Mirabelli. Well, they have changed the scoring from a wild pitch to a pass ball. Lofton at second base. What a one to count to Abreu. Ground ball hit right to the shortstop, Renneri. Bobby is retired. And that's two down, and that'll bring on Jim Tomey. Phillies last nine games after being so hot, not playing so well now. Three and six record. Only hit hitting under 250 in the last nine, only 3.3 .3 runs a game. No home run, or only five home runs, and the ERA's been pretty good. Tony has not fared all that well against Wakefield. He is six for 44, a 136 lifetime hitter against Wakefield. Two of his six have been homers, and he gets it right at Bellhorn. Second baseman throws out Tony, and the Phillies go down here in the first. No runs, no hits, and one left. And after one, Phil's nothing, Boston nothing. This copyright telecast is presented by authority. The Phillies may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Phillies. Sold out crowd here at Citizens Bank Park as Manny Ramirez leads it off. Manny hitting in 270. 16 home runs tied for seventh in the American League in homers, 57 RBIs, fifth in the league in runs batted in. Lifetime, Manny just one for 11 against John Lieber. Two quick strikes to Ramirez. But wide one ball and two strikes. One game played this afternoon in the Windy City, and the White Sox pummeled the Cubs 12 to 2 in interleague play. And he goes down swinging, and that's one down here in the second. First strikeout for John Lieber. 
That's set up by two good fastballs to start off, gets 0-2, and then throws a slider away. I think Manny was looking for a fastball to come back in, and that's why he was able to get him to chase his slider just off the plate. In that Chicago White Sox win, they have an eight-game winning streak and the best record in all of baseball. Tom Nixon takes a strike. He's hitting at 296. Eight homers, he's knocked in 37. One ball and one strike. Driven to deep left center field. It keeps carrying and carrying it off the fence. Good backup by Lofton. Nixon will go into second with a stand up double. Burl came close but couldn't make the play. Lofton there to back up. I think Burl thought he was closer to the fence than he was. This ball is sinker away. Up a little bit though, and then Burl kind of has to backtrack and didn't really get back to the wall. If he's going back to the wall instead of going along the warning track and then straight back, he probably could have caught it. I'll bring on Bill Miller, the switch hitting third baseman, hitting at 290. Miller has great numbers against John Lieber. He is 15 for 31. 484 career hitter against Lieber, including a home run. Strike to Bill Miller. Quite a few Red Sox fans trying to start a cheer, being drowned out with booze from Phillies fans. Oh, when the Phils were up in Boston a couple years ago. I mean, they were they were talking up in Boston or last year I should say they were talking about they've never seen so many fans from opposing from an opposing team up at Fenway including the Yankees a ton of Philly fans up there Brown ball in the hole that's a base hit to right field being held conservatively at third base is Trump Nixon and the Red Sox have runners at first and third Swain, the third base coach, opting not to try to score Trot. It's kind of surprising. It didn't look like Trot got a very good jump on the base hit. Really, why no reason for him to be looking back? Just look at the third base coach. He'll let you know. And it'll bring on Doug Mirabelli. Mirabelli hitting the 222. First and third, one down. One strike to Mirabelli. Maybe we'll try to get a ground ball here. Shots fifth in the all of baseball. Runners in scoring position. Now well, I can certainly score runs. They lead the American League in runs scored. Towering drive to deep left. And this ball's out of here. Three run home run, Doug Mirabelli. And the Red Sox have jumped to a 3 nothing lead here in the second inning. For Mirabelli, that's his third of the year. Only the ninth RBI for Mirabelli. And the long ball continuing to play John Lieber, the 21st home run he surrendered. Only Eric Milton of Cincinnati has given up more. Mark 
Bellhorn fouls one back. Bellhorn is switch hitter. Hitting at 226. Two strikes to him. The foul on the right field side, still nothing and two to Bellhorn. Bellhorn, curiously, is among the American League leaders in strikeouts and walks. Second of the league in striking out, sixth in the league in getting walks. One ball and two strikes. Balls and two strikes. Bounce foul. On well, the first inning, those New York Yankees have scored a run on Pedro. Wow. Pedro Martinez giving up a first inning run to the Yanks. Sound balls and a rare one for John Lieber, who came into the game with 1.9 walks per nine, tenth best in the league. And most of his wired, I should say most of a lot of his walks come after a home run. Phillies Fan of the Month contest, a chance to win four game tickets to a selected Phillies home game and two Southwest Airlines round trip tickets. No purchase necessary. Fans can register to win the Phillies Fan of the Month contest by going to the fan forum at phillies.com. It's open to legal residents of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Wakefield trying to move the runner along. Dunn's foul. For complete rules, see Phillies Fan of the Month at phillies.com. Whitefield one for six this year. Lifetime, he is a 122 hitter. He has one career home run. Hit quite a few years ago. Hit it in Houston. He's down the bunt. It's a good one. Lieberthal throws him out. Sacrifice is good. It goes to Lieberthal to Utley. Moves Bellhorn to second base. Last year, Lieber in the ALCS pitching for the Yankees against the Red Sox. He was outstanding. One and no lifetime against Boston in three starts. One game two in postseason. One one record overall. Good ERA. Ball and no strikes to Johnny Damon. One and one to Damon. Caught by Utley in front of the bag. The bat went all the way down the right field line. And Lieber certainly had Damon's number here tonight, but the Boston Red Sox put three on the board on Mirabelli's three run home run. Three hits, one man left. We go to the bottom of the second, three nothing Boston. After one and a half innings of play, Boston three, Phillies nothing. Tonight after the game on UPM 57, the honeymoon's over. It's newlywed nightmares on Dr. Phil tonight after the game on UPM 57. 
Matt Burrow leads off for the Phils, hitting at 298. Burrow 15 homers, he has knocked in 57. And now fourth in the league and runs batted in. Now the ball misses, one ball and no strikes. Ball miss again, two and nothing. Got that knuckle ball over, two balls and a strike. with that knuckleball. Will he come in with a, his fastball here? Probably not. I wouldn't think. Three and one. Now it's a knuckleball and he got it over. It's a full count. So if you're going to throw a knuckleball 3-1, certainly you're going to throw a 3-2. it off still three and two both teams have winning records in interleague play this season coming in fills seven and five Boston at nine and six the 19 home runs for the Sox full count to Pat Burrell towering pop in the shallow left for a of the shortstop is up and that's one down here in the second inning. It'll bring up Chase Hudley. He gets a high knuckleball, just gets under it. Hudley hitting a 310. Chase with 10 homers, he has knocked in 34. No strikes. Phillies coming to play second in the National League East, three and a half behind Washington. Those Nationals have jumped to a two nothing lead at home against Toronto in the second inning. It was the lead over the Atlanta Braves, just a half game. Atlanta playing at home against Baltimore. throw his knuckleball for strikes for the most part. Now backing out of play. Boston has a 3 nothing lead here in the second. Here, yep. 75 mile an hour fastball, LA. Got a pop up out of it. Well, Chase Utley, whiffle ball and bat set for all youngsters 14 and under on Sunday, July 3rd. That game has been moved to an 805 game, don't forget, against the Braves. And all youngsters 14 and under get a Chase Utley, whiffle ball and bat set. Order your tickets. Whiffle ball and bat set is courtesy of Turkey Hill. Call 215-463-1000. Bell hits a line drive. And it's right at third baseman Bill Miller. The Phillies go down here in the second. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. After two, the Red Sox three, the Phillies nothing. Phils will be looking their best against the Nationals starting Friday, July 8th at 7.05 for Independence Blue Cross Fireworks. 
July 9th at 1.20 for photo day and July 10th at 1.35. Order at phillies.com or call 215-463-1000. Now for the Dodge Stump the Fans trivia question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fan forum section for all the information. Please submit your answer on the subject line. Tonight's Dodge Stump the Fans trivia quiz. The splendid splinter, Ted Williams, the last player to hit over 400 in a season. Who was the last person to hit over 400 before Williams did it in 41? Answering winner will be revealed in the seventh inning as Renneria rips one just foul down the left field line. Renneria grounded out his first time out. Very close. Oh, inches. Quick strikes to Renneria. He's called for going around by Mark Wagner, the plate umpire. And that'll be the second strikeout for John Lieber, one down here in the third. Well, we have two great aerial fireworks shows after the games on Friday, July 1st against the Braves and Friday, July 8th against the Nationals. Aerial fireworks shows courtesy of Independence Blue Cross. Order your tickets for these fireworks shows and the games by calling 215-463-1000 or online at phillies.com. David Ortiz popped up his first time up. They have the shift on for Ortiz. With Udley playing out in shallow right field, Rollins playing near second base, and David Bell, where a shortstop would play, the whole left side of the diamond almost is open for Ortiz. Outfielders pretty much straight away. One ball and one strike to Ortiz. And he hits it right to J. Rowe. Almost knocked him over. Sonny hits it hard, but add Rollins, and that's two down. And it'll bring on Manny Ramirez. He struck out his first time up. He's that ship. Jimmy Rollins, that ball's hit. He's down to his knees. That ball was scalded. Manny Ramirez struck out his first time up. This supply ball, and that's going to be trouble. It's going to find open spaces. He jammed him, but he fists the base hit to left center field. San Ramirez is a two-out base runner for Trot Nixon. Well, first time up, Lieberthal, or Lieberthal, Lieber threw him two fastballs in for strikes. This time he goes up there, looks for a fastball in. A good pitch by Lieber. He just fists it in there, and outfielders both Lofton and Burrow playing deep. No chance for them. And you have to play deep for Manny Ramirez, of yep. course. Here's Trot Nixon. He doubled and scored a run his first time up. One strike to Nixon. Grounded foul. Balls and two strikes to Trot Nixon. And he remembers the first base. With two outs here in the third, Boston on top. Three to nothing here in the third inning. You see a shot of the outfielder still pretty deep out there. He just missed. Door slider that looks like it is right there. Yeah. Man, that's a good pitch by John. Got him. Got him with a breaking ball. Two strikeouts of the inning for Lieber, and down go the Red Sox. No runs, one hit. They lead one. We go to the bottom of the third. Three nothing, Boston. 3 0 both sides. Mike Lieberthal leads it off for the Phils, hitting at 237. 
Liberthal has Wakefield in his book. He's three for six lifetime against this knuckleballer with a home run. One and nothing to Liberthal. Didn't take the Mets long to answer Derek Jeter's home run. In the second inning, the Mets put three on the board off Mike Musina. And Yankee Stadium to take a 3 1 lead. Two balls and a strike to Lieberthal. Deep center field, but Johnny Damon back there in front of the warning track puts it away. That's one down, and that'll bring on John Lieber. Lakeville's had a long career, 297 games, 133 wins for him. Decent career ERA. Originally an eighth round draft pick of Pittsburgh in 88 out of Melbourne, Florida. Signed as a free agent by Boston in 95. Lifetime against the Phillies. He's won two, lost one, saved one. Lifetime ERA of 3-6-0 against the Phillies. And he's missed with two straight pitches to pitcher John Lieber. Lieber's one for 31. He is a better hitter than that. A lifetime 147 hitter. Hit. That's going to be the first hit surrendered by Wakefield. A good cutoff by Trout Nixon. So Wakefield kept throwing Lieber fastballs, and his fastball is 76 77. Lieber just teed it up and gets the Phillies' first hit. He's a one out base runner. It's like batting practice. Well, there's Broadway Charlie Wagner. Broadway Charlie, player development consultant who is. Been with the Boston Red Sox organization for 59 years. Broadway Charlie, great to see him. I always see him in a coat and tie. Always. That's why they call him Broadway. He's from Reading. Charlie is from Reading and at the Reading ballpark. The press box is named Broadway Charlie Wagner Press Box. What a gentleman. Teammate. Wonderful, wonderful man. He was a roommate, roommate of the splendid splitter Ted Williams in his playing days with the Red Sox. Doing nothing here to Jimmy Rollins, who struck out his first time up. Just a knuckleball over, two balls and a strike. takes care of this one for out number two. And will bring on Kenny Lofton. He struck out with safe down pass ball his first time up. It's a high knuckle ball and guys are just getting under it. Absolute foul. One strike to Kenny Lofton. You see that crowd. It's a big crowd tonight. All weekend. And the entire weekend against the Red Sox is sold out. There's standing room seats being sold before each game. To get the standing room only if you're coming to tomorrow or Sunday's games, you better come out early. So those have been going quickly as well. Well, 
Quite a few from Red Sox Nation are here. Two balls and a strike to Kenny Lofton. There's some. It's a little cue shot back to Wakefield, and that'll be it for the Phils here in the third. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. Chris Wheeler joins Larry Anderson in the fourth after three. It's three nothing, Boston. Well, Terry Francona spent several years here, of course, managing the Phillies and back in town as a manager of the world champion Red Sox, and I asked him what it felt like. There were some tough times here. I think anybody who goes through here is going to have some rough times. But and we didn't win as much as we wanted to. But but the part about coming back as a champion, I don't feel like I need to rub anybody's nose in it. Um, try to keep things in perspective. We were a couple hours from getting swept, and I could have been looking for another job. So <laughs> I think he tried to keep things in perspective. He's always been good at that, Andy. Yep. Class act, Terry Francona. Nice what happened last year, and of course he's the first to admit that he had good players and has good players, and you have a heck of a chance to be a better manager if you have good players. Now you see the numbers of what they did last year, and of course that big one, the ALCS, when they were down three games to none and came back and swept the Yankees. No one had ever done that. <laughs> That was about as unlikely a situation as you could imagine. I guess that's what it took to finally break the quote unquote curse. Line drive right at Chase Utley by Bill Miller, who singled and scored on Mirabelli's three run home run in the second inning. That's the difference in the ball game. Game four LCS. Miller had the hit that. Brought him back. Well, and Dave Roberts that scores was... the run, of course, and that stolen base that Dave Roberts had in that game was just, you know, and that was the thing that, that changed everything against Mariano Rivera. Roberts came in as the pinch runner, and then Miller knocked him in. They go ahead and win that game, and then they never lost after that. I mean, they just kept on going. Pretty good team. A lot of heart. I mean, the Cardinals were a heck of a team, too, but they just met up with Destiny last year and got swept. And here's Mirabelli, and you think maybe you're catching a little break with Mirabelli playing tonight as opposed to Varitek, who is so good and such a good offensive player. And what happens? Boom. Missed with the slider, left it right over the plate and about thigh high. And Mirabelli's a guy who comes in and can, he catches the knuckleball at Wakefield a lot. So he hits the high slider for a three-run home run. And the thing about it is it looks like Lieber has a terrific breaking ball. Yep. too. Mark Bellhorn on deck and then Tim Wakefield, the pitcher. Overthrew that one, missed away. What a player that guy is. Jason Baratek, the Red Sox captain, regular catcher. He was a free agent in the offseason, and Terry Francona said the one guy he really wants back is that guy right there, and they got him back. High in the air to left field. This one's playable. Pat Burrell right there. There's a difference in location of a pitch. Two outs. Washington Nationals are off and winging again tonight, winning their game two to nothing. They will be here soon. How about Friday, July the 8th? That is two weeks from tonight. And it's the second of two Independence Blue Cross fireworks show. Then Saturday the 9th at 1.20. That will be preceded by the very popular photo day. And then Sunday, July the 10th at 1.35, Modell Sporting Goods Kids Run the Bases. You can order online at phillies.com or call 215 463 1,000. Here's Bellhorn. It's kind of an amazing stat, Andy, that 45% of the time that he comes to home plate either walks or strikes out. Walks or walks to first base or walks back to the dugout. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, he strikes out a ton, second in the league, but he walks a lot. Let's pause for station identification, the Phillies television network. 
You're watching UPN 57 WPSG TV in Philadelphia. One and two on Bellhorn with 37 walks and 81 Ks. Second only to Richie Sexton's 82. I guess that means he just doesn't swing the bat much. At 88 walks last year, 177 punch outs. Incredible. Just strange numbers. And he was the guy, of all the guys that Terry Francona got ripped for playing last year, it was Bellhorn. Kind of hung in there with him, and he really produced in the postseason. Said he believed in him and thought he would help, and he did. Walked him. There you go. And he's walked twice tonight. That's amazing. But Tim Wakefield will bat. He sacrificed his first time up. He is one for six on the year as he's had a couple other interleague starts in National League parks. No balls and two strikes on the foul back. Johnny Damon waits on deck if Wakefield should keep the inning alive. Wow. Is he hot? Andrew Jones. 22 of them. He's going to probably be the player of the month. All right. Going to get a lot of votes because he's had an amazing June. Oh, Wakefield fouls another one back. He has 11 lifetime hits. Been all those years with the Pittsburgh Pirates when he first came up. But he's been with Boston for a long time. After the Pirates released him, he signed with Boston back in 95. Got him on strikes. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a man left. 3 nothing Red Sox. Happy. <laughs> that song. They play that song. Huh? I have no idea. What a setup that is. <laughs> oh, it's a classic. Hey, you guys enjoyed it. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, that's just great. For those who are wondering, that's become our theme song in our office, and. <laughs> One of those songs that Wills just is not crazy about. Especially after a loss. <laughs> oh. Oh. Bobby Abreu will leave. That was by the Partridge family, right, Andy? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Music. Yeah. Yeah. Right. T Mac does a little solo on it, Tom McCarthy. Oh, he 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 just he just belts it out. <laughs> Big Tom. Bobby grounded out his first time up. Here's a knuckleball like a pinball back there. Gets away from Mirabelli, then hits the umpire. Why do you throw one of those? You could pitch another 10 years. Well, I don't know if you could have been on the road another 10 years. <laughs> one ball and one strike. Two and one on a Bray. It'll be a Bray who told me Burrow as they try to solve Tim Wakefield, who has been masterful. Their only hit is a single by John Lieber. Luke in the left center. Damon will not get there. He plays a really deep center field, and Bobby drops one in front of him. So that's a Philly second hit of the game, and that'll bring up Jim Tomey. Jim Tomey is homer the last two games here at the park and it's like he's maybe starting to get locked in. Well that would be huge and then he goes the opposite field on a left hander. Good signs. 
hit a hard ground ball his first time up, but they had that shift on and it hit it right at Mark Bellhorn, the second baseman. There's Bobby Abreu with Big Poppy. Those guys came walking in together today. Renteria, Bobby, Bugetta, Urbina, about five or six guys coming in together. There was some chatter going on. <laughs> well, I'm sure. It separated right there at the Phillies clubhouse as Ortiz and Renteria went their way over to the third base clubhouse of the Red Sox. Their first trip here to Philadelphia in this ballpark. Tommy takes a knuckleball outside. That fastball when he throws it, 75 mile an hour. Tony's got a little catching up to do to reach his usual numbers. There goes a brave. We got a great jump, and he steals the bat. That's the one thing about Wakefield. You should be able to run on that knuckle. Yeah. You can even run on the fastball. Number 18 for Bobby. A good jump, but pretty good throw, but Bobby in there. That pop-up slide and sometimes scares you. gets him in trouble. One and one on Big Jim, as his manager likes to call him. Bobby with 21 stolen bases now this year, but he's not attempted a steal of third. Boy, that's 18 stolen bases. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's had 21 attempts. Yeah. Field, long run for Manny Ramirez. Did he catch that? Oh wow! What an unbelievable play by Manny Ramirez. He's not known for that. One out. He's not known as a real good outfielder, but you know what? He, he it's not for lack of effort. Oh, wow! Great play. He had to think he was in Fenway with that foul territory coming up fast like that. He like he didn't get hurt. Got a nice applause from everybody here, not just the Red Sox fans. The Philly fans appreciated that effort and that catch. And Tommy, of course, disappointed. Ahead in the count, hits a fly ball foul down the left field line and makes an out with a runner at second. Burl the batter. Knuckleball inside. He popped a short his first time. I think he's a bit of bunch of pop-ups tonight. There's Manny, and he always has fun. Look at that. There's the spike marks and the padding down there. Little comebacker. Wakefield. Two outs. And now Chase Utley, the batter. He got himself jammed on a fastball. He threw him three out of four or three straight fastballs last time. This one thing Kenny Lofton was saying when you hit this guy, you just have to wait and wait and wait, and it's, it's tough to do, but that's your only chance. This ball right off the end of the bat because he's out too early. Well, knuckleballers, the bigger the swing the guy has, the more they like yeah. pitching. So the shorter the swing, they don't like that. Or in, in Le Lieber's case, your bat's a little bit slower. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're the yeah. kind of guys that are going to hit a knuckleballer if he's on. Chase Utley has a little short stroke. Takes a strike. And when he throws that knuckleball for a called strike, he's really tough. You have to try to get him in situations where maybe he'll throw a fastball. And yet and you have an idea it's coming. Going two. Phillies have had a runner to second and a runner to third tonight, but not able to score. And the Red Sox have a three-run home run. Doug Mirabelli, their catcher. Got him with a knuckleball. And Wakefield out of the inning. No runs a hit. One last still. 3 nothing Red Sox.
see the Phils and Braves July 1st at 7.05, July 2nd at 1.20, and Sunday, July 3rd at 8.05. Order online or call 215-463-1000. Hey, Phillies fans receive in-game alerts, scores, breaking news, and more instantly on your mobile phone. Simply text the words Phillies to 65246 or MLB Go from your mobile phone. Johnny Damon leads it off and takes the ball inside. A $3.99 per month charge will appear on your phone bill. As long as you remain subscribed for Phillies fans on the go, text Phillies to 65246 at MLB go. Damon, a line drive base hit to right field. He had popped up twice prior to that. So he is a leadoff base runner. First in the American League in hits now with 95. What a big hit he got in game seven of the NLCS against the Yankees. The ALCS, a grand slam home run, Andy. Now that pretty much put an exclamation mark on it. And that's the final out. Embry, Baratek. That was so much fun to watch last year. I mean, you talk about great, great games. Those, <laughs> those games at Fenway were amazing. And as we're out there, the world champs. Renteria is grounded out and struck out. Johnny Damon can run. He's stolen seven bases in eight attempts. They don't run a whole lot, but he'll run. And surprisingly, David Ortiz has seven stolen bases. That is a surprise. As he uses the element of surprise. And Big Poppy is on deck. There he is. They've been able to get Ortiz out twice tonight. And they've gotten Damon out twice and Renteria out twice. But now Damon, a leadoff base runner here in the fifth. Damon with an 11 game hitting streak now after that base hit. Look at that hit. I guess that, that got Wagner. Yeah, that's that hockey goalie mask. It makes kind of a funny sound. Oh. Off Lieberthal's glove and then off his mask. Staggered it too. Yeah. Make that jaw a little sore. One ball and two strikes. Nobody out here in the fifth. Grounded foul first base. That place has been electric. Michael Buffer doing those lineups and his rumble bit. Let's get ready to rumble. And this place had, was really rocking. And then the free run home run kind of took the steam out of the Phillies fans. It's an interesting uh, outfit. <laughs> Pete would be oh, proud of that man. guy wearing his jersey. No. <laughs> two and two. Lieber Thal looks back at Wagner. I don't know where he's at. Really, it could have been was low, and it didn't appear to be low. Certainly had the plate. There's a broken bat blooper, and it is a base hit. And now this is where they really get you in trouble. When those two guys get on, and here come Ortiz and Ramirez. Ortiz has popped up twice. Popped up once to Jimmy Rollins and lined out to him in the overshift. Not getting the call on the pitch before there was a strike. Called the ball. Got a broken bat and blue. And they are in trouble. You're always in trouble when you got men on and these two guys coming up. Man. It's hard to get through these two. When you talk about RBIs, Ortiz was 62 and Manny with 57. Tendered by the Minnesota Twins. There's Manny Ramirez. Was David Ortiz. I mean, they did not offer him a contract. It's amazing. Oh. Now that, that's that's what big time RBI guys that do too early in the count. They go and look for a fastball to whack, whack, and that's what he did.
John's ahead of him 0 and 2. David Ortiz is an amazing stat coming into this game. 306 against right handers, 306 against left handers. Oh, got away with one there. Second, Renteria at first. They're moving Jimmy Rollins around a little bit. Got him with a breaking ball. Good pitch by John Lieber. He strikes out David Ortiz, and now he's got Ramirez, who struck out in single. Uh, this is just a great pitch to me. When you could throw your slider down into a left-hander with two strikes, and you start it at the corner at the knees and break it down towards that back foot. You will oftentimes get that left hander to swing over the top of it. And even if he somehow hits it, it's going to be foul. Right. Manny Ramirez loves to swing at the first pitch in RBI situations. And he throws a fastball into him and misses 1 0. Manny, conversely, 305 against right handers and only 183 against left handed pitching this year. But you wonder how that could happen. That was a lift and separate yeah, swing there. Ooh. That in the last seven seasons, over 30 home runs and 100 RBIs each of the years. Pretty consistent, huh? Yeah. With the Indians, some of those years, and of course with the Red Sox. Manuel's talking to him, talking about him before the game as he fouls that back that he first met Manny when he was 18 years old and started working with him. He said, you didn't have to work with him that much. He's just a natural hitting talent. Five K's now. He's got season high as six. He's done it twice. The last time was at Oakland. He's ahead of Manny. Uh oh. He's unbelievable. I mean, that didn't look like that bad a pitch. Away. Not far enough away. Three run home run. And Ramirez, six nothing. They've hit two three run homers tonight. Get through one of them and have to get through the other one. 60 RBIs for Manny. One thing is that ball's up a little bit so he can get it to airborne, and that's what happened. Been eating him alive with sliders, too. It looked like he might have thrown a high fastball. It was a fastball. And Ramirez with that great opposite field power hits it into the seats. And the Red Sox do what they do, and that's they'll hit the long ball on you. Two, three run homers, six nothing. Then Jones, well, they got some pull hitters that have sent him diving all night. There's Ramirez, who made a great catch last inning in foul territory to get retired Jim Tomey, and now comes back and hits a three run homer. Squirter up the middle. Utley can't get it. Infield hit. Well, I mentioned we talked about Charlie Manuel having Manny Ramirez in the minors at one time and in the big leagues. And Charlie talked about what makes Manny such a great hitter. If there was a natural hitter as far as balance and mechanics go, it would be Manny Ramirez. He's got good weight shift, good balance at the plate, makes his hands real quick to the ball. Good eye-hand coordination, hits the ball, uh, stays what they call inside the ball or lets the ball travel a little bit on him, and he's quick enough to get through it. He hits straight, he'll hit straight through the ball. 
just a natural hitting talent. And he's just amazing year after year after year. And he lives in Manny's world, as they say. I mean, they, they just have to look the other way sometime with him. So there's nothing ever vindictive about him or mean. He just does a lot of goofy things. He's a hard worker. Yeah. They say he's a great teammate. But every once in a while, <laughs> he just kind of drifts away. Bill Miller is singled and scored and lined out. So Jeff Geary up in the Phillies bullpen is two three run home runs have put the Phillies in a big time six nothing hold of the Sox today. Backdoor breaking ball for a strike one and one. ball right field playable for Bobby Abreu and that's the second out Boston Red Sox closing in on first place too. The Orioles have been there for a couple of months. Baltimore you're getting beat. So they could take over first place tonight if they win and Baltimore loses. Orioles got a shot here at second and out at second base is Mirabelli as he tried to stretch that single into a double. So that'll end the inning. But a three spot. Five hits and one left, and it's 6 nothing Red Sox. Fans love their team. We love coming down to the ballpark. We love coming out to the park. They dance when they score. They cheer when they win. And in between, they eat. So join the Phils when they meet the Marlins July 14th through the 16th at 7.05 and Sunday, July 17th at 1.35 for Pat Burrell and Billy Wagner Action Figures Day. Order now. How many Elvises does it take to take Las Vegas? Kurt Russell, Kevin Costner. Let's do it. Saturday night at 8 on UPN 57. This is a UPN 57 weather update. Hi, Phillies fans. I'm CBS 3 meteorologist Kathy Orr. Warm today, but by tomorrow, the heat and humidity is going to be pumped into the Delaware Valley with temperatures soaring through the 90s over a good part of the area. For tonight, clear and mild, 65 to 70 with a southwest wind. By tomorrow, mostly sunny, hazy, hot, and humid, 90 to 94 degrees. Well, the full 10-day forecast coming up at 11 o'clock on CBS 3. After four and a half, the Red Sox six and the Phillies nothing. Sunday at night on UPN 57, one of the final six singers will be crowned Phillies' hottest singing sensation. It's the grand finale of Give Me the Mic Philadelphia Sunday night at nine on UPN 57. Tim Wakefield with a 6 nothing lead, and he has dominated the Phillies here in this warm, muggy night with a huge crowd at Citizens Bank Park. Fills with just two hits, a single by Bobby Abreu, a single by John Lieber. Phillies keep the bullpen up. Amari Talamaco hasn't pitched. Well, I don't know that he's pitched since he's come back this time. Starting to throw, and Lieber due to bat third in this season. Pitch one time since they brought him back on June the 6th. There he is. So it looks like they could hit for him. John Lieber with the two three run home runs tonight and has now surrendered a total of 22 long balls. Knuckleball and rip foul by Bell. David lined out to the third baseman. Miller is first time up. Tim Wakefield now 38. He'll be 39 in August, the 2nd of August. 
Born in Melbourne, Florida, still lives there. Soft fly ball to left. Here comes Manny again. One out. Phillies Festival is Monday. Fun-filled event, autograph booths, live and silent auctions, grab bags, every roll's a winner, lots of fun for the whole family, and it's for a great cause. The proceeds benefit the ALS Association, Greater Philadelphia Chapter. To order your tickets or for information, call 215-463-1000. And the knuckler comes in high. Ramon Martinez is in the on-deck circle to bat for Lieber. With Telemaco ready to come in the game. And not the way you drew it up. Two outs. But Phil is just seven really done a whole lot. They haven't even hit balls hard. John Lieber's night will be done. Up nine hits and six runs, two big blows, two three run home runs. So Martinez will bat for him. And that's what Ramon has done since coming over to the Phillies from Detroit, along with Urbina in the Polanco deal. Looked like he just threw a breaking ball. Once in a while, a flip a curveball. No, I guess it was. It was a knuckleball. Looked like it had a little loop to it. There was another knuckler. He's a little glove, doesn't he, for yeah. a pitcher? It's like an infielder's glove. Wakefield thought he had a third strike there, and he starts walking off the mound. It's one and two. So did I. <laughs> and another weak ground ball. Renteria, Ortiz, three up and three down. The runs hits errors, and nobody left on base. Six nothing. The Red Sox. Independence Blue Cross deserving Philly is Robinson Tejeda. The rookie right-hander has hung an occupied sign on the starting rotation's latest vacancy, filling in for the injured Randy Wolf. Tejeda has been brilliant. In Wednesday's outing against the Mets, he went six strong innings, allowing just one run and didn't walk the bat. In his first three starts, Tejeda's earned run average was a minuscule 0.54. Tejada's turn is brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. You deserve it. And there you see the totals on the game. The big two three-run home runs tonight by Boston. That's the difference in the game by Mirabelli and Ramirez. And Amari Telemaco coming into game number five. His last appearance, as we mentioned, was back on the 6th of June against Arizona. He pitched an inning. And since he's been brought back, and then he was sent out, and since he's been brought back up again, he has not appeared in a game. So he's just kind of been hanging around. He's a long man more than anything, and they really haven't needed him. But John Lieber gone after five innings, so Amari Telemaco gets a call tonight. Tim Wakefield on deck, and then Johnny Damon. Nine hits tonight for the Red Sox, two for the Phillies. One of the tough situations is, is a reliever is not getting much work and then trying to come in and throw strikes. Once he gets this lineup, a little topper to Jim Tomey off the bat of Mark Bellhorn, who had walked two times tonight one away and that'll bring up Wakefield who sacrificed and struck out Atlanta winning their game Washington winning their game the Mets winning 
and Florida and Tampa Bay tied. The Phillies losing six to nothing in interleague play tonight as far as the National League East goes. Over for strike one. And the Red Sox come in here smoking hot, fouled away. Four straight, nine out of ten. And they've also played more road games than anybody in the American League. So they're looking at 24 of their final 36 games at home this year at Fenway, where Terry Francona's club really plays well. That they do. The Phillies were going through a lot of that with a lot of road games early in the year. It's starting to catch up now. But in the American League, it's been the Red Sox with all the road games. Boston 22 and 10 at home. And 19 and 20 on the road. Trying to get to 500 tonight and have a pretty good shot at it, up 6 nothing. Bullpen, and it's a six-man bullpen. Keith Falk, their closer. Mike Timlin, the former fill out there. They have three lefties, three righties. That ball is hit well. Right center field. Lofton can't get there. It's in for a hit. He flips it to Abreu, who gets it back in and holds Wakefield to a single. Nice job out there by Lofton to hold the pitcher to a single. But that is career hit number 12 for Tim Wakefield. A oh, nice job there. Bobby alert and ready for it. Job. And keep the double play in order for Johnny Damon. 0 for or 1 for 3 with a run scored. He scored on Manny Ramirez as homer. They'll play off Wakefield at first. Damon with 95 hits to lead the American League. And Telemaco starts him with a slider for a strike. Johnny Damon second in the American League at hitting against right-handed pitching. Coming into the game tonight at 349, he now has an 11 game hitting streak. Wakefield, the base runner, and outside, one and one. shallow right field. Utley, he doesn't see it. Bobby Abreu says he does. <laughs> and Chase is happy about that. Two outs. After the All-Star break, a four-game series with a fish here at Citizens Bank Park. Three night games, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. All of them at 7.05. And then Sunday afternoon, 135 Pat Burl and Billy Wagner sports picks action figures will be given away. That's the Phillies and the Marlins for four after the break. You can order online at phillies.com. Call 215 463 1000. Edgar Renteria. Big hitter in that fifth inning. Looked like he, John Lieber had him struck out. Didn't get the call and then he broke his bat. Flipped the single into the outfield. Ortiz struck out, but then along came Manny Ramirez with a three-run homer. Up and into Edgar. It's 13 errors this year. That doesn't sound like him. Really? The guys won Rawlings Gold Gloves over the years. Silver Slugger Awards. Slider. Missed the spot way inside. Two and one. David Ortiz on deck with two outs. And off into the club level, off to our right. Two and two. Here's Ortiz 0 for 3, and they still scored six runs. They can thump. Oh, yeah. They're your prototype American League bashers. Good slider from Telly. Ground ball to Utley. Chase, a little bit of a low throw dug out by Tomey. And that'll end the inning. No runs to hit and one left. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning. 6-0 Red Sox. 
of their order. Jimmy Rollins, Kenny Lofton, Bobby Abreu. They have been dominated tonight by Tim Wakefield, who has that knuckleball flutter. Look at that. It's thrown 10 fastballs, 53 knuckle balls, and a curveball. That's a lot of knuckle balls. <laughs> and those knuckle balls, of course, are thrown with your fingertips. And he is the, I don't know, are there any more left? Sparks for a while was around. But he might be Fernandez. in. Fernandez. I think, uh, was it Jared Fernandez who came up with Boston? Right. Went to Cincinnati, but I don't know if he's around still. He, I think he's a triple A if he's anywhere. So it's not like you see a lot of knuckleballs. No. And he has a good one. He's thrown it for called strikes tonight, and that's been key. Grounded. Nice play, Bellhorn. Off balance throw and got it. Mark Bellhorn, a nice play. One out. Well, Terry Francona bringing his Red Sox into town here, and Tito had never seen this ballpark. I asked him what are his impressions. The one thing I have knows the ball carries. <laughs> I mean, I think you could get one to the warning track here. Right? Um, you know, that's what makes you a little nervous, but it's a gorgeous ballpark. But what makes me is there's so many of the same faces. I mean, look, even you, I <laughs> hate to admit it, but you, know, you got Frank Kobenbarger, the guys in the clubhouse. That's pretty special for me to see some of those guys. <laughs> well, it's good to see him, too. Here's Jason Michaels for Lofton. Lofton kind of came up gimpy after that play in right center field, and I guess something must be wrong, and they're going to bat Jason for Lofton. Kenny tonight had struck out and grounded back to the pitcher, Wakefield. Jason Michaels off a good game yesterday against New York. And he takes a knuckleball for a strike. Now watch what happens after this. I think I saw him limping a little bit. Yep. And we'll see. We'll get a report. And he just reaches out and slaps at the first. I mean, he can look so bad trying to hit that thing. Two outs. Especially, you don't, you don't see him that much. You don't see him, period. Yeah. It's like the last second you decide you got to swing at it. Remember, two guys that used to be with the Phillies could throw some batting practice when they were knuckleballers that were really good. Tommy Hutton had a tremendous knuckleball, and Del Unser had an amazing yeah. knuckleball. Del did. So when they were around, they would throw some batting practice to guys on nights when, when maybe the Necros might pitch. But I don't think the Phillies had anybody who could throw knuckleballs and beat Pete, and I doubt it. Probably not. So the first thing you do, all of a sudden, you're up there hitting, trying to hit this thing. And you're down 6 nothing anyway. Abreu has one of the Phillies' two hits. John Lieber had the other one. Bobby's also grounded out. And he taps one weekly to first. Ortiz, Wakefield. Another one, two, three inning. A run hits errors and nobody left on base. Harry back with Andy in the seventh inning. Six nothing Red Sox. Oh, Lincoln Mercury game summary. It's been all Boston and Mirabelli a three run home run and Ramirez with his 17th home run a three run shot Johnny Damon has 11 game hitting streak and Phillies haven't been able to do much with Wakefield after six innings only two hits and back to the play by play Harry the K. All right. Thank you L.A. and Jason Michael stays in the game to play center field. Leading off for the Bo Sox here in the seventh is David Ortiz. He has popped to short, lined to short, and struck out. When I say short, J Roll's playing him where a second baseman normally plays. See the shift on for him with Jimmy Rollins there and a deep Sutley base. <laughs> Been Sutley in the is out there in is. shallow right field, and David Bell's not even playing where his shortstop usually plays. He's playing near the bag at second. He's got the whole left side of the infield, but 
Kelly gave him a little chin music. One ball and one strike. Little bow tie. One and one to count to Ortiz. Almost walked into that. Two strikes. Telemaco has done really well, in that he had not pitched since June 6th. A period of 18 days. And he's come out throwing strikes. Off to the air to shallow left. Pat Burrow is there. Ortiz is retired. That's one down. It'll bring on Manny Ramirez. Manny responsible for our Rico defensive play of the game. Watch this catch. Foul ball right inside the line or outside the line, but coming right up on the stands area. The slide dives into the padded area and makes a, just a terrific cut. I don't know he did that, but he's also two for three, including a three-run homer. Telly's done a nice job, Al. Yep. You consider it how long it's been since he's been out there. And it's so hard. Strikes. It's hard to do, too. I, mean, I don't. You do all you can in the bullpen. You throw every other day or every third day. But it's different out there. And you come in the game and you got, especially against an offense like this, so he's doing a, a real nice job. It was Tron Dixon who was doubled, struck out, and singled. Strikes to drop Nixon. A bit high with a two and nothing. Wide three balls and no strikes. Miller do up next. Nixon taking all the way, three and one. Forty-five thousand and ninety. You pay the attendance here tonight. Gonna sell out crowd here. Standing room only. It's full count now to Trout Nixon. Kind of a quiet crowd. No, well, Phillies fan, Phillies fans have not had a whole lot to cheer about with Boston leading at 6 0. Phillies have had only two hits on the night off the knuckleball. Calamago comes back to get Nixon. Struck him out. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. Stretch time. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Boston six fills nothing. Our Dodge Stump fans trivia quiz tonight. Ted Williams was the last player to hit over 400 in a season. Who was the last person to hit over 400 before Williams did it in 1941? No, it was not tight pants Titus. It was Bill Terry with 401 in, in 1930 for those New York Giants. First Phillies fan with a correct response, Bob Savoy of Philadelphia. Congratulations, Bob. You're the winner of the Phillies prize pack. Thanks for playing down stump the fans. Jim Tomey leads it off. Tomey has grounded out and fouled out on that great catch by Manny Ramirez. And Wakefield has just dazzled the Phillies tonight with that knuckleball, and he's throwing it for strikes. He has not walked the batter. No balls and two strikes. 
with Wakefield is pretty much when for the year when when things are going right when his knuckleballs on it's he is very tough and when it's not on he he gets hit around. It's on tonight. Yes, it certainly is. Tommy is rung up. That is the fourth strikeout for Wakefield and one down here in the seventh. And Tommy not happy with this call. Didn't appear to agree with it at all. That really dropped down yeah. at the plate. Look at how this dances and all of a sudden. Mm. Looks like a strike. Here's Pat Burley has popped up and tapped back to the mound. Not only is he getting the Phillies out, but he's getting the Phillies out with ease. Yeah. <laughs> Hate to say it, but it is. It's just he's got the knuckleball working and they're not able to do any. I mean, they're not even hitting the ball hard. No. And two strikes to Pat Burrow. Time with three pitches. That is five strikeouts for Wakefield. Two down here in the seventh. Here are tonight's Citizen Seven. These lucky fans each receive a convenient prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank with the most seven day branches in Philadelphia. Here's Utley has popped up and struck out. Fly ball left field, not deep. Manny Ramirez puts it away. A one two three inning for Wakefield who has now retired 12 in order. No runs hits there is none left. We go to the eighth six nothing Boston. Bill Miller leads it off for Boston here in the eighth inning looks at a strike. Telemaco working in his third inning in relief of John Lieber. Strike to Miller. Frank Lofton had to leave the game with a groin strain, right groin strain. Jason Michaels taking over in center field. Two balls and a strike will pause for station identification on the Phil's television network. You're watching UPN 57 WPSG TV in Philadelphia. Two and one account to Bill Miller. Looks a strike, two and two. umpire Rob Drake who says yes he did and that'll be the second strikeout for Amari Talamaco. Well Kurt Schilling who was a big part of the world championship last year has been on a disabled list. He pitched a simulated game here tonight at Citizens Bank Park and hopes to return to the Boston Red Sox rotation soon. Pitch five innings through 84 pitches. He's been on the disabled list since late April. He will pitch a minor league rehab assignment in Charlotte on Wednesday. And the Red Sox hoping to get him back, and he should be back soon. Telemaco's been moving some guys' feet pitching inside. I don't know if that's on purpose or just because he hasn't pitched in so long. His command wavering a little bit. So when he was third inning of work. Pop 
picked him up. J. Roll will make the play. That's two down. Telemanco has done just a great job in keeping this game at 6 0. Well, the Braves will be coming in next weekend, Friday, July 1st, 7 05. Fireworks have for the game, courtesy of Independence Blue Cross. Saturday the 2nd at 1 20, and Sunday, don't forget, has been a time change. It'll be a night game at 8 05. All youngsters 14 under get a chase at league with ball and bat set, courtesy of Turkey Hill. What are your tickets for that weekend series with the Braves? 215-463-1000 or online at phillies.com. Mark Bellhorn has walked twice and grounded out. One ball and one strike. waging a comeback at Atlanta. The Braves still lead that game. Seven five, but they were well up in that game. It's now in the fifth inning. Baltimore with a one half game lead over Boston coming into play tonight in American League East. He balls in two strikes to Bellhorn. The foul back still two and two. Grounded sharply, nice grab, Tony. Tony to Talamaco covering. What a three innings by Amari Telemaco. Gave up just one hit. No runs, no hits, and none left. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Six nothing, Boston. Toyota Interleague scoreboard. The White Sox all over the Cubs 12-2 behind Freddie Garcia who wins his seventh. Cleveland is ahead of Cincinnati 4-3 in the seventh inning. Ken Griffey Jr. is homered for the Reds but they trail 4-3. For Jr. is 13th. New York Mets behind Pedro Martinez a 5-2 lead on the Yankees in the sixth. Derek Jeter a homer off Pedro. Cliff Floyd and Carlos Beltran have hit homers for the Mets. Washington has a 2-0 lead in the seventh inning. Yes, they bond the wise has started for the Nationals. He's out of there now. They lead the Jays 2-0 in the seventh. Florida and Tampa Bay are 3-3 in the seventh inning. Jorge Cantu is homered for the Devil Rays is 12th. Atlanta has a 7-5 lead now on Baltimore. Or only in the fifth inning, Andrew Jones has tied Derek Lee for the league lead in homers with his 22nd. And Milwaukee a 1-0 lead on Minnesota early. Damian Miller accounting for the only run of that game with a home run. Here it is, 6-0 Boston as David Bell leads it off. He'll be followed by Mike Lieberthal and then a pinch hitter for Amari Telemaco. Tim Wakefield has been in total command here. Two strikes to Bell who has lined out to third and flied out to left. Rounds it to deep third, backhanded and throws off the money is Bill Miller. A wide throw. I have to wait and see how they score it, but Bell would have made the play. Yeah, back in there and just has everything right, but he just pulls Ortiz way off the bag. Yes, he scored in there on Bill Miller. And here is Mike Lieberthal. 
takes him one of the few balls hired off Wakefield tonight. He fly to deep center his first time up and ground to short in his second at bat. And this ball gets through the catcher Mirabelli. And that'll move up to second on either a wild pitch or a pass ball. With that knuckleball, you never know. Catcher has his work cut out for him with that knuckleball. Good. I mean, it, Wakefield actually has an idea of what he's going to do with it, but the catcher doesn't always know what it's going to do. It is a pass ball. Two balls and no strikes to Lieberthal as the Phillies trying to get something going here on Wakefield. Andy Chavez has moved into the on deck circle to bat for Telemaco. In the right field and snared out there by Trout Nixon. Somebody would call his retired, then will bring on Andy Chavez. Andy Chavez to pinch hit for Telemaco. Cam Lieberthal has hit it about as hard as anybody in the Phillies lineup tonight. He doesn't have anything to show for it. Hit the ball. I mean, he's really been the only one that's hit the ball hard. There's Andy Chavez. And he's hitting just 173. He's one for six as a pinch hitter. A ball of no strikes. Lakefield is. Complete command all night. Now, the last time Wakefield pitched a complete game was 1998. You would think you would have. I mean, a knuckleball, you, you know, would think you would have. Yeah, he did it earlier in his career, pitched quite a few of them. He had two of them that year in 98. He hadn't had one since. Taking pitches, making him throw strikes. In his career, he's thrown 25 complete games. Aaron Fultz up in the Phillies bullpen. He'll be the new pitcher in the ninth inning for the Phillies. Got that one over. Three balls and a strike. His fastball and gets up there on 75. It was a 70, 75 mile an hour fastball. And two for strike. Full count. Only two three ball counts for Wakefield tonight. Get another fastball and he fouled it out of play. He humped up on that one. That one got up there at 77. Put a little extra on it. I mean, it's been almost 95 percent knuckleballs from Wakefield tonight. He did throw a couple of fastballs to pitcher John Lever. Lever got a base hit on him. And he misses with a high fastball. That's his first walk of the night. So the Phillies have two men on base and one out for Jimmy Rollins. Struck out, popped up, grounded out on a nice play by Bellhorn. Dave Wallace, pitching coach, getting on the bullpen phone now. Michael Ball got it over. One strike to Jimmy Rollins. And two strikes. 
David Bell at second, Andy Chavez at first. One out here in the eighth. Bouncing ball to Ortiz. Ortiz taking the sure out. Two way field for out number two. The runners move up. They'll bring on Jason Michaels. 96 pitches for Wakefield and just superb job. Only two hits and probably only two balls hit hard tonight. His low hit game in his career is a three hitter. That was in 95. I would imagine, even though it's got a six-nothing lead here, I would imagine Wakefield would want to try to complete this game. But think the shutout going. Jason Michaels came in as a pinch hitter, stayed in the game. He grounded out and is only a bad one ball and no strikes. and no strikes. He came into this game fifth in the American League and walks 39 of them. He's only walked one tonight. And for the most part, he's had really good command of that knuckleball. He's been throwing it for strikes. His walk coming in this inning, but he falls beyond Michaels three and nothing. Jay Michael making throw a strike with Bobby Abreu waiting on deck. Abreu is throwing a little harder now. Three balls and one strike from the 3 0 knuckleball. Abreu waiting on deck. Michaels walks. Two walks in the inning. Surrendered by Tim Wakefield. And here comes Dave Wallace, the pitching coach. He's going to make the pitching change. I guess he's just going to ask Wakefield if he's okay. M loaded with two outs for Bobby Abreu, who has one of the Phillies' two hits off Wakefield. Grounded out, single, and grounded out. He's run on his average of pitches per start with 101 tonight. That's what he averages. He's thrown as many as 114. And now we're going to get right hander up in the pen. It looked like Timlin, I can't tell. I would imagine LA that for a knuckleball pitcher, pitch guy in the end, throwing knuckleballs doesn't take a no. whole lot out of your arm. No. no it's it not is. like if you're throwing 114 fastballs and sliders. And Bobby takes the ball. He has had such great command of that knuckleball until this inning. Close. He wanted that one, didn't get it from plate umpire Mark Wagner. Guess he must have called it high. He called one on Tommy. That told me, but it dropped down a little more than that one. Two balls and no strikes. Got that one over two and one to Abreu. with our first real scoring opportunity. Bell at third, Chavez at second, Michaels at first with two down. And now it is 2-2 two -two to Bobby Abreu. And Tim Lane. 
Embry up in the bullpen. Got him with a knuckleball. Struck him out. Six strikeouts for Wakefield. No runs, no hits. One error, three runners left out. And we go to the ninth inning with a score, Boston six and the Phils nothing. Continuing our Toyota Interleague scoreboard, Houston has a 4 0 lead on Texas behind Roy Oswald. Jason Lane is homered for the Astros, is 11. Pittsburgh and St. Louis are nothing, nothing in the third. That's Kip Wells against Jeff Supon. The start of that game delayed because of explosions at a nearby industrial plant in St. Louis. 1 0 Kansas City has a lead on Colorado. They just started. Detroit and Arizona, the Dodgers at the Angels, San Francisco at Oakland, and Seattle at San Diego later. Aaron Foltz is the Phillies' new pitcher, the 31-year-old southpaw, appearing in his 24th game. 1-1 loss, not a 2-8 ADRA. And this one's fouled back. And we have a pinch hitter for Wakefield. Kevin Euclid is going to bat for Wakefield here. So Wakefield out after eight shutout innings. A two-hit baseball. Nicholas fouls it out of play. Nicholas is hitting a 308. One homer he has knocked in eight. It's surprising to see Wakefield come out. The shutout going. Yeah, I am too, kind of, especially, you know, pitch cap. Kind of meaningless for a knuckleballer because it's not going to wear your arm out. I would think he would want to stay in there and try to complete the shutout. But there's a line drive right with David Bell. Euclid is retired one down. Now Wakefield with the bases loaded. He gets Bobby Abreu on a nasty knuckle. Really? See the drop on that baby? Yes. That baby just went straight down at the plate. Another drive by Wakefield. And here is Johnny Damon. Damon's 0 for 4. He has a 10 game hitting streak on the line. Excuse me, he is 1 for 4, so he's. Continued his hitting streak. He is hit safely now in 11 straight games. I don't want to count to Johnny Damon. Damon is the third leading hitter in the American League, hitting at 338. Foltz getting the bag and then he drops the ball. Foltz did a good job to get to the bag just before Damon, but then he couldn't handle the throw and it saved the first base. Right, a little bit of indecision on Foltz's part, whether to go to the bag or go for the ball, but once you have to start going back, you might as well forget it. And Tommy's got to come and get that ball and try to barehand it. Yep, barehand it and look at the bag at the same time. It'll be an infield single for Johnny Damon. That'll bring on Edgar Renteria. Renteria is one for four. One ball and no strikes. And three game Johnny Damon signed his poster for him. Finding out he's on TV. <laughs> two balls and no strikes to Renteria. Put the string on him on a 2 0 change up, 2 and 1 the count to Renteria. the 
left field. Burl a long run and oh, makes a sliding effort and a great catch. He was playing Renneria way, way over at left center field. He had a long run, a great, great grab by Pat Burl for out number two. A long run for him. He goes down to his knees and slides on that crushed brick that warning track and just holds on to it. Great effort and a great catch by Pat Pearl for out number two. And now Fultz must deal with David Ortiz who is 0 for 4 tonight. One strike. To Ortiz. One ball and one strike. Let's see how far that goes. Way out of here. Second deck. Here at Citizens Bank Park, number 19 for Ortiz. And the Red Sox now lead it by a score of eight to nothing. All of their runs coming on the long ball. Definitely passionate about their socks up in Boston, and a lot of fans that came down here liking what they're seeing. He knew it. Number 19 for David Ortiz. And here is Manny Ramirez. He's in a three run over his 17th. Ball and no strikes to Ramirez. He's also single besides hitting the three run home. Ball and one strike. To the count to Manny Ramirez. One ball and two strikes to Manny. And the Red Sox have taken a commanding eight to nothing lead. And this is Whiteness's old theory that one strike out that leadoff hitter is not holding true tonight. Jimmy Rollins did strike out for the Phils, and the Phils have been blanked on just two hits through eight innings. Two balls and two strikes. Now Ramirez goes down swinging, but two more runs on the David Ortiz two run homer. Two hits, nobody left. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Boston leading by a score up to nothing. Don't you just love the sight of men in uniform? See them Friday, July 8th at 7.05 for Independence Blue Cross Fireworks. July 9th at 1.20 for Photo Day. And July 10th at 1.35. Order tickets now. John Oru comes in to play first base, replacing David Ortiz. And the new pitcher is the 35-year-old left-hander, Alan Embry. Embry appearing in his 33rd game. He's won one loss four. 7-4-7 ERA, 35 hits and 31 in the third innings. He has struck out 24, walked nine. Given up quite a few homers. He's given up eight home runs in that 31 in the third innings of work. Jim Tomey will be the first one to face him here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. The last 12 innings for Embry's allowed 18 hits and or 20 hits, 18 runs. And he has a fairly large cushion here. It's 8 nothing Boston. 
One ball and no strikes to Tommy. Tommy's just one for eight lifetime against Embry, and we have struck him out five times. Grabbed by Embry and the better left hander throws out Tony. One down here in the ninth that'll bring on Pat Burrow. Burrow's 0 for 3. Ball hit the turf so hard that crashed the old. Like some sand in there just kicked up. Glad to see that knuckleballer out of there. He even popped up, tapped back to the mound, and struck out against Wakefield. Remember, he's got to look like he's throwing 150 miles an hour. It was a 93 mile an hour fastball, but after the knuckleballs of Wakefield, yeah. Quickly in the hole, no balls and two strikes. One and two. about tonight the Phil's being shut out in the last speed pitch I hope there was straight change and struck him out now tomorrow they'll get Matt Clement who's having a good year eight and one on the season with the good ERA he can be very very tough bring on Chase Edley Edley has popped up struck out and flat out to left Jason Michaels. One ball and no strikes. If you bewildered, well, he was trying Lake to pull field, his hair out. Lake field really dazzled the Phillies. Even though Clement has pitched really well, I'm sure they're glad that they have seen their knuckleballer for the year. Two balls and no strikes. Side outs a base hit the left field. So that leaves a two out base runner. And you bring up David Bell. Bell's lined to third, fly to left, and then safe on the there. Just the Phillies' third hit of the night. center field for Damon who makes the catch and this one is over. No runs a hit, no errors, none left. Boston wins game one of this weekend series eight to nothing. And our co-Chevrolet players of the game are left fielder Manny Ramirez of the Boston Red Sox and knuckleballing is Tim Wakefield on the mound. 
Ramirez played great defensively and offensively. Well, a terrific catch down the left field line on this ball off the bat of Jim Tomey. It looked like he had no chance to get it. A sliding catch into the wall. A little finger point to the Boston fans out in left field. Then he comes up and takes a fast ball from Lieber away. Elevated it and hit it well into the seats in right. He's got power all the way around. A three-run home run for Ramirez. And our W.D. Mason deliveries of the game were the knuckleballs delivered by Tim Wakefield. Uh, he was filthy. He had the Phillies hitters baffled for eight innings. They just could not figure him out. Lieberthal hit a couple of balls hard, but that was really about it. And gets out of a jam in the eighth inning with the bases loaded when he struck out Bobby Abreu after he'd been down the count 2 and 0. Before a sellout crowd of 45,000 plus with a lot of the Red Sox nation here the Boston Red Sox over the fills by a score of 8 to nothing here at Citizens Bank Park. And we'll be back with the totals and a recap right after these messages. And love their team. We love coming down to the ballpark. We love coming down for the fun. They dance when they score. They cheer when they win. And in between, they eat. So join the Phils when they meet the Marlins July 14th through the 16th at 7.05 and Sunday, July 17th at 1.35 for Pat Burrell and Billy Wagner Action Figures Day. Order now. At Citizens Bank, Parker was all Boston tonight for the Red Sox. Eight runs, 12 hits in air. They leave five fills, no runs, three hits, no errors with seven left. Tim Wakefield wins it. He is six and six. John Lieber takes the loss, eight and seven. Our next telecast will be on Sunday. Tomorrow's game will be on the Fox Network with Joe Buck and Tim McCarver at 120. Back on UPN 57 on Sunday at 130. Brett Myers goes against David Wells on Sunday. W.B. Mason Phillies week with Ron Burke at 1 o'clock. Producer of Phillies Baseball is John Slobotkin. Jeff Halleckman is the associate producer and our director has been J.R. Aquila. For Larry Anderson, Chris Wheeler, Harry Callis, thanks for watching the Red Sox shout out the Phillies 8 to nothing. Stay tuned now for Everybody Loves Raymond next on UPN 57. Good night, everyone.
Thank you. 